Yeah, so as we discussed yesterday about uh, some communication, what is the requirement of communication? So in MWA, MBW, that is one, what we call it as uh, management by walking around. The management by walking around is one of the very crucial aspect where we need to communicate with our superiors as well as subordinates or lower level. So it helps us in making us to how the data, of how the information is being known by the people. So Thomas Peters and Robert Waterman, these are the two people, Robert and uh, Thomas. These are the two people who labeled the management by walking around. There is one more name exists, but it's called as management by wandering around. The wandering around is nothing but it is being how you move or you move yourself into the organization. It is one technique where the managers, so what do you call it as managers, uh, spend some time in the work area and interact directly with the employees to know what actually is being go going on in the organization. So manager needs to maintain an informal communication, needs to maintain informal communication and establish trust among employees. So employees do not scare out or hesitate in interacting with the manager. So manager job along with a managing or controlling or planning and he needs to communicate with the people or in an in, in informal way. Then next there are various other ways where how he can communicate with them. The way of interacting with employees sends a message to have a care and good relationship with all employees irrespective of their ranks. So irrespective of their ranks, they must be in a position to interact with. So he has to interact with people and where the manager must practice MW, MBWA, management by walking around. Next in this point, what are the advantages of uh, going with this? So what are the advantages? So as we know, every point has its own advantage. The advantage of uh, this one is observations. What do you mean by observation? Observation how they are working in the organization. So when we start interacting with them, the employees, customers, colleagues and other managers will feel happy, will try to share communication in case if there is a problem exist. Then next, we will have a clear picture of the organization, what is going on, whether the people are job satisfaction or they are in uh, satisfaction, what are they doing, job satisfaction levels, how they are motivated. So. There is one more point by name motivation. So this is also part of M B M W B M M B W. Okay. So then next one vision in formal way. So what does it mean by this is so organization vision they can the manager can express what is the main goal, what is he is willing to see, what the output he is expecting from people. That is what we call it as a vision. The next the management will have an opportunity to have fun means they can go around they can chit chat so up to certain extent till the limitation we should not get crossed then next what are the disadvantages there are certain disadvantages exist with this type of uh, management by walking around they are judging all issues it is not possible because sometimes he he enters into a communication means he is interacting with people in bad time. He might not get proper communication and proper outcome he won't get. Proper input he will never get. And there are certain places where the information whatever they try to share, the employee tries to share, it might not be, might not be genuine, might be filtered or might be distorted. This is what are the disadvantages and advantages of M management by walking around. The next, there is one more concept. So line and staff organization. As I just wanted to say, how exactly meant by what is meant by line organize line organization and staff organization. 
so in this part in this line and staff organization so how they suffer from some drawbacks in line organization what happens line organization is autocratic in nature so let me explain this uh, later I will come to just to see how the sales manager and uh, HR manager production manager and maintenance manager he tries to interact with people whereas we have represented with a dotted line that is human rights means uh, human resource manager or department so under HRD or human rights there is a training manager and personal officer so this is what we call it as a structure so accordingly we are going to explain the topics and what is a line and what is a staff organization under sales manager hrd human human resource division or the department is able to communicate with production manager and sales manager and what represents these dotted lines what represents the solid lines we will try to represent the solid lines are these and there are certain dotted lines what the meaning of that under line and staff organization so we will talk about this what about this so under line and staff organization they suffer from one drawback what are the drawbacks the line and staff tries to eliminate they try to eliminate draw, drawbacks of the organization line and staff organization so we are talking about two types of organizations even though it is in in the single organization we just try to represent what is meant by line organization and staff organization it tries to simplify the relationships tries to simplify the relationships how the relation relationships are simplified the next the line authority gives supervisor a better chance to monitor and control the subordinates so he can where he can supervise things a line and line authority supervises and helps to monitor and control and tries to control the subordinates the exactness of decision will depend on the responsibility so what is the responsibility the decision the making of the decision is a crucial in the responsibilities the next the staff function is to support the line function in terms of data material personal information labor welfare and all those facilities required for the production or the production activity so is the role of a staff function in the organization the next from hrd as we know the previous the hrd you what we call it as human resource development or human resource manager is a staff function that extends its support extends its support to the sales department and to the production department so where he is going to look after the recruiting people training people and development of employees so let me write so they are recruiting training and production uh, sorry development of employees the next uh, the problems that are connected to labors unrest and implementing personal policies motivate the employees to complete their targets so they must be motivated in what way they must be motivated so in the aspect of work in the aspect of updation themselves in the aspect of uh, dedication towards the work it influences them uh, to make the organization feel as if their own work and what is the major role of them in making the organization well that is what is required in line and staff organization the next every line and uh, organization has advantages and disadvantages it also suffers from advantages and disadvantages what are the advantages the line and the number of specialists reduced becomes economical nowadays there is a trend the the less workforce the less people work in the organization the more economical the organization will be actually sometimes it is not true so the next point the line authority not connected to planning it is not connected with the planning because it is only where it is going to organize in the system the line authority is not connected to planning the next if we want to achieve any effectiveness effective coordination of functional heads and supervisors 
So who is a coordinate head? It is the level of the manager. Then who is a functional head? Who is a supervisor? Is nothing but supervises things. So it avoids confusion that prevails function of the organization. This is what is required. Avoids confusion in the functional organization and the sharing of there is one more point related to it. There is a sharing of responsibility not possible at any level. The sharing of responsibility. Next one, what are the disadvantages? Why do you have a disadvantages about a line and staff organization? The prestige of a line executive suffers at work. Like, so I have planned very well. The manager has planned very well and everything is ready to implement. But the other manager might not agree to that. So there is a prestige of line executive which suffers. And then next, the second one, establishment of exact relationship. So exact relationship between line and other departments, there exist. So that is what is required. So these line and staff organization, they are effective for various committees or executives at all levels. And sometimes it is very important committees are appointed for budget. They must be appointed for budget. It's a common point, budget, the next research and manufacture. This is what required in line and staff organizations. The next one, there is, a, as we said in the previous one, that is what we consider as uh, the Peter's principles and Parkinson's law. It's very simple point. Uh, just to look into it. So Lawrence J. Peter and Raymond Hall, they are two people. They come out with a, a simple principle. There is nothing to break your head. It is very simple. In hierarchical organization, means hierarchical organization, where there is a system from top to bottom. Every employee tends to rise to his level of incompetence. Means the competeness. So that is what is mainly represented. The example sake, a manager, a manager tries to reach a promotional position where he achieves competence means a competence in the sense he is more specialized to that position which leads to promotion of the manager to higher position in the hierarchy means for example if you want to take so you have a better skill levels you get promoted and again you have improved your competence means the knowledge again you are get promoted this is what the peterson's prince these things we know but to apply these principles into the organization that become a standard. So Peter's, uh, Peter's principle, Peter's principle became a standard. Then what about Parkinson law? There is one more law as we consider as Parkinson law. Means the concept, these concepts are very simple. The work expands so as to fill. It states work expands as to fill the time available for its completion means there are two tendencies of it an official to multiply the subordinates two tendencies that is multiply the subordinates but do not make them rivals the next create a work for each other for example if you are appointing a new manager in addition to the existing manager there generally exist a competition so we should not make the competition a rival and we must assign a job, assign a work. We must assign or create a work to each employee or each subordinate. And it might happen at the subordinate level. It might happen at the manager level. It might happen at any level. That is what we call it as at the peer level. Means a manager doesn't have any problem with the subordinate. But the subordinate and other subordinate who is newly appointed will have definitely have the problem. So this must be managed very well in the organization. That is a Parkinson's law says. Work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So we need to appoint people. So I will stop here. Let me continue with the other slide. Uh, please be 